What is up everybody? Today we're going to be installing a water block on our Xilinx VCU1525 FPGA. Now here on this channel we're concerned with cryptocurrency mining, but I'm sure that you could uh, use the water block to cool down the card for many other types of applications. The water block we're going to be using here is the tool water block sourced from FPGA.guide. They're currently sold out, but check back often, they may come back into stock. First up, I'm going to remove the mods that I had placed on the card, the uh, cooler on the back there. Go ahead and take that off. Next up, you'll want to release the five screws on the back that hold on the shroud. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Don't lose the screws. You're going to want to hang on to those. Next up, go ahead and take out your RAM, set it somewhere safe because it's going to get in the way if you don't. Next up, you're going to need to take off the heat sink. Now, I like to use my blow torch. Wait. No, 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 no. No, that's for something else. Okay. Next up, take off the screws that hold on the back plate. Again, don't lose them. Next, go ahead and take off the four screws that hold on the heat sink itself. Go ahead and release those. And the heat sink, with a little encouragement, should pop off before anyone runs into the comments and tells me I'm going to break something. I am being gentle here. Pop off the heat sink, should come off pretty easily, exposing the chip. Next, you're gonna to need to take off the, uh, the block that holds it on, that black block there, and that's gonna come off much the same way. It's gonna take a little bit of encouragement. You're gonna to have to get under there, possibly, you might not have to, I did, with a flathead screwdriver. You can see here, it's wanting to come up on this end, uh, but you're going to need to go down the line a little bit and release it from the thermal pads that are holding it down. And with a little encouragement, it should pop right off. Go ahead and lift that off there. Go ahead and take off the thermal pads that were placed there by the factory. Now here I'm cleaning off the thermal paste, which you will need to do. I'm using coffee filters. Clean off the majority of it with some dry coffee filter, and then I use a little alcohol-soaked coffee filter and paper towel just to get off as much as I possibly can. For this, I'm going to be using the EK Tim Ectotherm Thermal Paste. It came with one of my EKWB kits. I like to pour one out for my homies and then get started. I put a lot of thermal paste on there because I leave nothing to chance. And I see most overclockers and people who uh, do this kind of thing. That's not very, that's not very, that's pretty juvenile there, technicals. I see a lot of overclockers and professionals uh, actually spreading it out. I know you're supposed to use a piece of rice, a rice size dab, but uh, me, I just, uh, I went for it. I don't want to leave anything to chance. Next up, let's go ahead and strap on that water block. Let's take a look at it here. It comes pre-installed with thermal pads uh, already in the places where they need to go on the water block. Now, uh... The, the guide said that it would come with a thermal paste pre-attached as well. It did not. I had to apply my own thermal paste. So take off the stickers, line it up according to the guide, and go ahead and place it on. The guide says that the thermal pads will hold it in place. Give it a press to let it know you love it. And it should hold it in place. Now, for me, when I went through, I suppose perhaps the thermal pads don't have enough sticking power to hold the entire assembly on. Or perhaps I didn't press it down far enough because this happened. So yeah, I wasn't careful. The card fell right off the assembly, so I had to line it back up. Luckily, nothing. Yeah, I know. I'm frustrated, too. Let's go ahead and line up the back plate. Go ahead and put that on there so we can hold this thing in place. Line up the screw holes. It's got some thermal pads pre-attached to the back plate as well. Go ahead and line that up. Load in your five pins. Put those in first. And then you're going to put in the four spring screws in the middle Go ahead and pop your RAM back in. Go ahead and unscrew the plugs. I put in some angled fittings here that uh, swivel just so I can direct the tubes where I need them to go. These are available in the link in the description below over to Amazon to buy the EKWV fittings. They're the only ones that I use. 
go ahead and put down some uh, some barbed compression uh, fittings there for soft tubing. Let's go ahead and throw it on our test bench. Give it a kiss to let you know you love it. All right, and so let's go ahead and rig it up. We're going to be using the clear soft tubing here because we uh, make YouTube videos and we want people to see the colorful red color. Go ahead and tighten those down. Check all the fittings on all points in the loop. Make sure we're not going to get any leaks. Go ahead and throw some paper towels underneath just in case we do have some leaks. We don't want anything leaking on there. I use a separate power supply to prime the, the loop. Go ahead and put the, uh, the jumper on the motherboard connector there. Go ahead and load her up with round one. As you see here, I mixed up my own coolant for this. I used concentrate from XSPC. This is the blood red coolant. I put a little extra higher end on the concentrate there because why one gripe with this block is it does have mixed metals, or at least it appears to. I have yet to hear back from FPGA.guide as to whether or not there is a full contact between that copper plate and anything else, or if there's some kind of membrane there. Although they say that the aluminum block itself is anodized, although I've heard from someone else in our community saying that the anodized aluminum blocks always break down. And so uh, with a card like this, that's not something you want to happen. So that's it guys, that's how you put a water block on a Xilinx VCU 1525 FPGA. This is a stock one straight from Avnet. It's not a BCU, it's not any of one of the modded cards like from Bitware that's uh, custom made for cryptocurrency mining. I have the all stock one here. If you got any more questions, let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on Twitter, I'm at The Technicals, or even better, head over into our Discord. Just type discord.thetechnicals.io into your browser, it takes you straight into our Discord. Stay tuned for the performance thermals that we have running on this thing. We're going to be running the Tribus, Kesak, and the OX Bitcoin bitstreams on this card to try to get some performance numbers based on what we got on the stock configuration. So stay tuned. If you like what you saw here today, please consider leaving me a like. Leave me a dislike if you, uh, if you care to do that. And if you do, I beg of you, please let me know in the comments below why. And if you're a real fan, boy, hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications for more content. Once again, I'm The Technicals. See you next time.